you show us what the rock and lock looks so like rock first? Rock and lock, we typically see that it's, here's the deal, it's developed on the range for range shooting. So it used to be the shove and shoot, to where you would shove, you would draw your weapon, you would rock the gun and you would shoot, right? So you'd push the target until someone shot their hand. Then they said, oh, you can't push with your hand. So now we're using the elbow to push. See how we're creating a range technique. So if I'm here and I'm drawing, the gun is right there, not only for this, but to get punched to the head. So basically, this is the thing that the target's never on the range, right? It's easy to grab. Look at the angle when I actually draw and then turn on the laser. Look where the laser is actually hitting, right? Huh. See if someone's attacking me, it's on the peripheral of the body. That's not gonna stop someone. So when people are drawing here on the range, the target doesn't hit back. So as they come here, right, see where, even right here, yeah, and when you start falling out from someone hitting you, first thing you're gonna do is start turning. Now the gun is not even pointed at them. Here's a scary statistic. Most disarm of police officers are not from the holster, and it's not from out here. Guess where it's at? It's right during the draw. It makes sense, because think about it. I'm here fighting, he goes for a gun grab, I go, holy crap, he's going for my gun. Now I start to draw, but look where I'm at. I've released everything from the, all my retention stuff is gone. So now we're fighting over a gun. Even if I pull the trigger, it's gonna jam. So we've worked on this for quite a while and we've come up with a couple techniques. We lost three officers in 18 months getting their guns taken away. We said, bullshit. So we came up with a technique that uses the brace contact position. So the brace contact position is basically, I'm grabbing around the muzzle of the gun to control the gun. I know it's only gonna go off one time. We were playing around, we're doing some sparring, and we found that, you know what? For close quarter weapon retention, it works pretty good. As long as I can get right here, it's pretty hard to take it out of my hand and look where the gun's pointed. It's still pointed right where it needs to be to take the shot, right? And depending on how many shots I need, there's some other tactics that we use with that too. I'm gonna to put you inside a phone booth. You're gonna to have to fight for a minute over your gun. I don't care what you do, but that fight's gonna go on. Whether you hit him or not, you're gonna be fighting. So, how do you long do you think this would work in a phone booth? Guess what, folks? Not very long. Now the gun's jammed. Now I'm fighting over the gun. Now all your tactics start to go out the window because now I'm scrambling to get this gun working again versus keeping control of it and being able to, even if I miss the first shot, we now have some techniques to be able to fight with to get rid of it, chamber another round and get another shot on. So, with my agency, they do live fire. Right, they have to work up to live fire, right? Obviously you can't do elbows on someone on the range, but I want them to be comfortable right here and be able to shoot and be able to hold on to the gun. Because at this distance, standing on the ground, the greatest danger is for them to get control of my gun and take it away. Sir, I've never ever seen, I've seen all the Instagram videos of these guys doing these yes. things. It looks uh, good on the range. It, 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 looks, it gets the views, but what you said to me here makes a lot of sense, so. And the big thing to do is really pressure test this. You can't do it just on the range. Put some people in some gear, put some simunition, uh, and go in. And you'll see what happens in real life when someone's really trying to go after your gun. So just don't do the range kata, right? Look how quick I am, I can shoot, boom, boom, boom. Well, that's not real life. By the time you decide to get the gun out, He's gonna be so close to me. Even if I get a round on Gary here, guess what? How many rounds can he eat? One of the guys I trained with, he ate five rounds before he took the gun away from the, the other guy. So think about that. The human body can absorb a lot of you know, rounds, especially a handgun round, and keep going. So do not pen, depend on that Hollywood one shot stop. At this area right here, I have to be moving. Bad guy's moving. If I extend my gun out too far, bad guy gets a hold of it. Yeah. Right? If I take hits, you'll see guys turn away. We have less than a 30% hit rate at five yards and in in live action fire. Less than 30%. Less than 30%. Wow. What other considerations uh, do we need to know about this? Because uh, I'd never seen this before. Right now, it seems very sound to me. Are there any pitfalls we need to know about? Any shortcomings of this technique? You need to practice it. Uh, so with the beginning, cert pistol works really well, but you have to learn how to chamber or a, a round safely. So we usually use, because we use simunitions, that basically we've taken secure blanks, we've already pulled the trigger so now it becomes a dummy round. We do a safety check, drop the hammer and all these. So when we're actually doing the training, it's going to look, so as Gary's here, when he's going through the technique, I'm going after the gun, right, and here, and he, he misses but he's still fighting, he pushes me off as he cycles, 
he just saw if he did a good cycle. If he covered the ejection port and you jam it, this is where you have to practice with it. You have to be true to yourself. If you jam it, guess what? Fight's still on, right? And until he puts enough rounds on me to make a stop. Also, torso shots are not the optimum shot at this distance. Oh, Head yeah? shot's gonna do what you need it to do quicker. So we learned the hard way. We lost four officers in one coffee shop, right? The, the big thing between the difference, officers hit rate, 100%. Clemens hit rate 55% with three different guns. The difference, he shot everyone to the head or the neck. So you notice how Gary's elbows are protecting, especially from those big shots, right? If you're gonna take a round or a punch to the, to the face, you don't want that chin to rotate like a knockout punch. He can stay here in quite a while, but look, the gun's still pointed at me. Right, if I'm going after the gun, I'm actually giving him an opportunity. The other thing about this, te this technique, it's an offensive technique, right? He's going into me. He's not trying to get away, right? That's what changes the difference. Because if I'm grabbing the gun, look what happens to me when he starts pushing. Brings the gun right where he wants to take the shot, all right? So not defense. If he's trying to keep it away from me, you go to that, you know, predatory, right? If he's trying to keep it away, boom, boom, hit it. If he's already fired, then he cycles another round in. And he's ready to go. If the if he takes a torso shot, it doesn't work. Go to the head with the next shot. All right, so boom, boom, keep it away. Keep it away, cycle. If you can take it, take the next shot up. Again, if I back away or I'm taking around here, yours is gonna keep me at the normal distance. There's no reason. But if I rush him, guess what? How long is he gonna wait for me to get a hold of it before it goes back to that position? Right? If I back away, you can rotate back out. But how long does it take for me to cross that distance and for him to react to it? That's the biggest issue. Right. Can we get closer again? Let's let's freeze this moment in time right. where we're in this position. I'm just gonna try to pick it apart. Like okay. uh, oh. so let's let's get into it. So here and here. Drawing it, getting is it, it into your hand is, is, there, is critical. Is there, is there this? Right. So he's using this as that. an offense. He's using that as offense. Yeah. So he has both the elbow from the rear. Yeah. Bring him up, boom, boom. Up. And he has the edge. This one is probably one of the best techniques because if you can bench press how much, right. that's how much force is going into me. And all he has to do is get it out of the way. Boom, recycle it around, get it ready, go. If it doesn't, if he doesn't work, he continues to fight with it. Is he in any danger positionally of shooting himself? So, I mean, depending on the weapon. So if I have a real short weapon, so let's go to a, a really small weapon. So now Gary has what we call a pocket pistol. So pocket pistol, when he starts to cover the muzzle, so he has to ride his fingers back farther. Right, right. So he can still get a round off. He's gonna get a little bit off the front muzzle blast. Right. But what's the other side of that? <laughs> yeah, Someone right, grabbing right. onto your gun or getting a round on to make me stop doing what I'm doing. Is there anything structurally? I mean, are you off balance? No, he's... So here's one thing. Do not push the muzzle backwards because you can actually take it out of battery. You actually want to pull forward with your lead hand and pull back with the back end. That keeps the gun in battery because without it, you start to push. Guess what? It can actually push the gun out of battery, All right? So we'll show you right here with the, uh, the SIM gun that you can actually push it out of battery. Right, so, because sometimes people want to push that backhand in. Well, if you're holding on to the muzzle and you push with the backhand, see how it starts to actually eject around. So really pulling with that lead hand, right, and letting that do the work. Uh, we did this with uh, our smallest officers in our classes, and we usually put the largest officer against that person to try to get the gun away. Once the elbows start fighting, right, and they're hitting, they no longer want to go to the gun, they're just defending against the elbows. That's the equalizer, right? And as long as they're turning, they can get another round in there, let the gun do the work, but first, maintain control of it, throw elbows as you need to, right? But get the round in, be prepared to go forward with it. If you don't believe it, get some type of uh, non-lethal training round, get out and try it. You'll see how easy the rock and lock falls out could it walk the work? Absolutely. The rock and lock could work. You hit the person one time in the torso, they stop. But do you want to depend your life on it? Do I want to train someone that's going to go out and get killed? 
The answer is no. Wow. Well, thank you very much for this uh, very informative uh, video. If we wanted to see more of your videos, uh, where do we go? So we actually have one specifically on that on the LexLevelTraining.com site. Come and take a look at it. It breaks it down specifically on how to do the techniques and the safety protocol behind it. We take it from the dojo to live fire. Okay. Right on. Thank you again, sir, for your time. Thank you. The concept behind both the brace contact, we call it the G-Raps position, but Gary has this baton, right? He knows that within this distance, this is the disarm position for me to get hold of it. If he gets it, if he goes to that position here, where I'm trying to grab, goes back to the brace contact position, he can still throw all the elbows, he has good retention, and if I clear, he goes back to the distance tool it's designed for. But a lot of people get freaked out because it's not working, it's a distance tool and that's what it was designed for. Yes. So when you take it into these ranges, right. Boom. there's right. a lot, yeah. Now get control of it, the yeah. muzzle. There's your muzzle, using the same concept. You, this could be a rifle. Could be a rifle, could be a ticket book, could be a flashlight, it doesn't matter. Congruency. That's it. Don't teach people all these little micro techniques. Give them one that works in the most situations possible. So if I needed to take a shot because he's either choking him. That's your partner right, right there. And I, I need to take a shot. He probably doesn't want me just taking a haphazard shot at his head, right? But coming in with this position, I can now take it to where the angle of the trajectory is either upward or downward, right? But it's a positive contact position to where I take the shot, it's gonna be incapacitating, but I'm not endangering him or the other people on the other side. Why wouldn't you just do one of these? Like just uh, we have a habit of, one, just pushing the gun. Yeah. The gun now is out of battery. Right. Oh, there you go. Or if I put it close to him, he sees it, right? He's going to grab onto the gun. Now look where it's pointed. Right at my partner or I lose the gun. Right. So good retention position, but also a very accurate shot that I can come in. I can even take a body shot through the body. Boom. Or I can take it right here and the angle's still good through his body. All right. Versus just take haphazard shot here. I don't know where it's gonna go. Man, I'm really trying to pick this apart and find holes in it, and I'm struggling to do that. It looks like you guys really did a lot of homework with this.